manipulating scale models, the handler recreates the flight deck on an outline crew members call the Ouija board. The handler has to think in three dimensions as he juggles the locations of jets, tractors, and crew members. On a flight deck, stand well clear, lower an aircraft, elevator three to the hangar bay, stand well clear, lower all three, lower all three. With so much taking place in so many directions, crews work hard to be ready for anything. They constantly hone their emergency skills. The boat deck rescue crew drills often and hard. This is a carrier. We have a lot of people working in a flight deck. We got aircraft in the air. God forbid something happens. Either people get blown overboard or you have aircraft in the water. Uh, that what makes it our job here on the boat deck is very important. Because we're the ones who are going to go and pick them up. When something does go wrong, the results can be devastating. In just seconds, airplanes can be lost and lives irrevocably changed. What you've just witnessed is a rare occurrence, but unforgettable for those who survive it. As this single-seat F.A. 18 Hornet traps, the arresting cable stretches to the breaking point. When it breaks, the jet quickly disappears over the side and into the water. Training saves the pilot, who ejects immediately. This yellow shirt miraculously jumps the cable as it whips under him, not once, but twice. Other well-trained crew members are not so lucky. As the cable snaps back, it takes out everything in its path. Seven crew members are seriously injured. Three in critical condition are immediately evacuated by helicopter. Few aboard will ever forget their focus during training that focus intensifies when a carrier enters a war zone where the stakes are even higher. Manama Bahrain is a commercial port on the Persian Gulf and base of the U.S. Navy's 5th Fleet. 5th Fleet forces are supporting American troops on the ground in Iraq. At all times, the lineup includes a Nimitz-class carrier. After a fast crossing of the Atlantic and Mediterranean, the USS George Washington has reached the Gulf with her carrier strike group to join a larger force already in place. George Washington carrier strike group left Norfolk. It left with a certain number of ships, aircraft, and people. When we show up over here, we then become part of the theater commander's menu, so to speak, that he can, he can push around the theater as, as he sees the need. We can pull them all together and operate as a carrier strike group. That's how we train, that's how we worked up. Um, or we can put, put those pieces where they're most needed. 327, F1, goes to Marshall. GW has sailed into harm's way. With the U.S. fighting in Iraq, the Persian Gulf is part of a war zone. This ordinance is live, and the carrier's pilots are about to put it to work. Down below, crew members prepare weapons in one of GW's 44 magazines. These specialists have spent a year learning to work with explosive devices, like these 1,000-pound bombs. Teams use hand tools to avoid stripping threads that would keep them from diffusing unused ordnance carried back from a bombing run.
Down here, a bomb only gets one of its fuse elements. Final triggering devices go into place at plane side. These weapons travel between magazines and flight deck in two different elevators, reserved for ordnance. Should fire or explosions occur on deck, this system keeps flames from reaching the magazines. On the flight deck, ordnance specialists join an air wing support crew to arm a plane. They work quickly, but with absolute concentration. There is no margin for slackness. No one wants a bomb coming loose in the middle of a launch. Once specialists install the final triggering mechanisms, the pilot can take off. Towering 80 feet above the flight deck of a Nimitz-class carrier stands the island. This superstructure mounts dishes of avionic systems that scan for planes, missiles, and surface craft, friendly or hostile. Beneath the radar arrays, crews and gear fill three control rooms. On the flag bridge, the admiral and staff coordinate the battle group. Above on the main bridge, the carrier's captain and his command crew control the ship. The topmost bridge, primary flight control, is where the air boss works. On the flight deck, stay clear of the port catwalk, stay clear of the battle line, stand by to recover aircraft. Battles, lenses on, you have control. This we'll area up here we call a uh, tower or primary flight control. And uh, the mini boss, Commander Dave Fox, and uh, myself, Commander John Sheehan, our job is uh, to ensure the safe launch and recovery of the aircraft. 305. The mini boss is uh, in charge of the forward part of the ship, so launching off the bow. And uh, my main responsibility is the aft part of the ship, catching them and then launching off the waist. Uh, but both of us sort of back each other up, keep our scan going, uh, looking for anything that's abnormal. In about uh, an hour, we'll launch our next cycle and then catch our next cycle. But we're sending aircraft uh, over the beach with precision guided bombs. They're talking to our troops on the ground there. So uh, each hour and a half, we'll launch a new cycle and catch the next cycle. As pilots prepare to take off, flight directors or shooters adjust the carrier's catapults, custom tailoring each launch. A few feet from the plane's path, an armored bubble shields Lieutenant Commander Stephen Schmidt. Attention, good stuff. Good looking at that top winds across. Combat. Salute. 450, 450. We're clear forward. Legs, arms cross. Thumbs, thumbs. Watch track. Fire. I'm Lieutenant Commander Steven Schmidt. I'm uh, one of the shooters here on the ship. We're the last check in all the safety concerns of getting the aircraft in the air. Everything from uh, whether the aircraft is safe for flight to the catapult uh, being safe to launch them. We had four uh, qualified catapult uh, and arresting gear officers on board. We rotate through the positions uh, so we stay sharp. Another shooter, Lieutenant Commander Dave Larson, works the flight deck. My ultimate job is to save the responsibility of launching and recovering all 15 aircraft. Must stop here. And we have this app, and we're safely laying this app. That's my fault. Pilots depend on shooters, and shooters depend on the flight crew. And what he's doing here is bringing me the weight of the aircraft. It's in uh, thousands of pounds. The heavier the aircraft, the, uh, the more power I have to give them from the catapult. And I control that setting right here with my capacity selector valve setting. I go to the tables for that, and it gives me a predetermined opening rate of that launch valve, and that's how much steam goes through the uh, launching okay. cylinders for the catapult. Now they're double checking me below decks to make sure I'm using my charts correctly. It's a, it's a system where if, if I screw it up, they'll catch it below, and uh, it doesn't happen. I, I like to take pride in what I'm doing here, and I, and I get it right the first time, but just in case, they're checking me below decks. 